47 degrees. We'll call it 18 degrees. That's our high for the day. Congratulations. I think we can go better, to be quite honest with you. And uh, I seem to have a little bit of static. Uh, well, we'll do the best we can uh, with this. I'll put those down there. And I'll try these headphones. How is that? Try that. There we go. Uh, and uh, good morning, Brock. Uh, coming out of the Gold Coast. Uh, how are you, my friend? It's been a long time since we've caught up. Yeah, it's been ages. It, it really has, my friend. But hold on. We've been following you, uh, seeing you doing some live gigs, of course, Facebook and Instagram, and people have been so kind to be able to share those events with you uh, and believe me we're very fascinated with your work uh, just wondering well I saw one there with a, uh, a pretty young blonde lady on stage with you uh, is she your flatmate the last time we spoke there was a uh, pretty young lady wandering around in the background I'm just wondering if it's the same lady yeah it is <laughs> there you go good use of resources right there and very talented young lady in, uh, in her own right uh, how about a shout out for her who is she? Uh, uh, she's a, an amazing female singer named Natalie Pearson. Yes, and, and I've got to agree with you. She is a very, very uh, a talented young lady and, and absolutely uh, emphasises your show, I've got to admit. Uh, but uh, at the same time, my friend, you don't really need that much empathy uh, simply because you're so talented in your own right. Oh, thanks, Sarah. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't call me sir. Call me Grant. I uh, haven't got the, uh, the nod from the government quite yet, but I'm uh, expecting it any time now. You'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, you want a funny story? Uh, this year, um, we have uh, the honours coming up. In fact, I think next month they, everybody's going to be uh, awarded their knighthoods and everything like that. Well, uh, we found out uh, a couple of months ago that... One young man, well he's not so young now, uh, known as the King of Kowido, where we are here, out of this town, uh, has been uh, knighted and he's going to be in his investiture uh, next month. Now the thing about this was we were actually out getting ready to do a concert and, and lining everything up. We came back and all the neighbours around us said, hey listen, Sir John Rolls is looking for you and we went, nah, no. No way is a knight going to be knocking on our door looking for us to be able to have a chat to him. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so, okay, we get a phone call or two, and uh, we, we managed to miss those. Great. Uh, and then uh, one day I get this phone call, and I've got this guy ringing me up, and he says, listen here, I've been trying to get hold of you for ages, and I'm going, that does happen, actually. We are very, very busy here. I apologise. Who am I speaking to? And he goes, John Rolls. And I said, Pardon? Sir John Rolls? And he goes, yes, Sir John Rolls. I want to come up for an interview. And I went, you're kidding me, right? And he goes, no, I've been trying to knock on your door for about four days in a row now, and uh, have been getting nowhere. So uh, we are followed by knights, and uh, I have a few others that uh, over the years have uh, gained their uh, sirship, if you know what I mean. So I'm still waiting in line for mine. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be too far before uh, you get one for uh, uh, for your work in uh, Australian music. Well, we don't do them over here anymore, so you have to get knighted by the Queen here. Right, okay. I wonder if Rob Farris put, uh, Rob Farris put a stick in the mud for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you never know. Uh, he might be three-legged running down the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now, uh, sorry about that, uh, but you know I am a big fan of Rolf uh, when he was a stage uh, performer. I got to admit he's an amazing artist uh, and uh, yeah. could always come up with a paintbrush and come up with a great uh, rendition of something while he was doing it. So uh, uh, take nothing away from the artist, the man himself, but uh, his other life uh, really doesn't concern me to be very honest with you anymore. Now, Brooke. It has been such a long time since we've spoken, seven months in fact, and I'm just wondering how you're going, uh, are you going to be releasing any new work in the near future, and uh, when you do, would you consider sending some CDs over here so that we can give them away to our fans? Yeah, definitely. I'm probably not going to release an album until March or April next year, um, but I'm releasing singles. I've released uh, two singles that will be on that album 
already, and it'll, I'll probably release another two before I actually release the album next year. So that's the goal anyway. Nice, nice. Now, at the same time, I've got to ask you, and uh, believe me, we've been going through your videos and everything like that, and one of my favourites, of course, is the uh, Country Girl song, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Absolutely love that track. Uh, but in the meantime, we were talking to a guy coming out of Nashville, very, very important man. He really, really is up there, and uh, he's asked, asked personally, would you please ask Brooke if... He, if we pass on the details of him to you, would you get in touch with him? Because believe me, he is fascinated with your music, absolutely loves it, thinks that you would fit in like a, uh, a hand in a glove over in Nashville, and at the same time, we'd love to be able to promote you, your music, and your videos. Uh, just wondering if you'd consider that. Yeah, of course. Nice. Of course, anytime I get my music played, I'm always happy to do that. Nice. Well, this guy's name is Steve Baker. He comes out of Nashville and his company is called uh, Vision Image Marketing. And, and believe me, very, very important man in, in the industry over there, which may lead to future work for you over there, if you know what I mean. And, and we'd be very, very happy to be able to hear that you've followed through and uh, are a huge success in America. Well, that'd be amazing. That's <laughs> everything. Exactly, exactly. And of course, when doors and opportunities come knocking, uh, uh, even if it does come from a, uh, from a Kiwi, my friend, uh, I, I suggest maybe you look into it because, believe me, we are absolutely stoked to be able to pass this information on to you. It doesn't happen every day. Wow, well, that's, that's amazing. It'll be a good, good, great opportunity. Absolutely. I'll get Barbara to pass that on to you. But first of all, we're here for a reason. And I want to talk to you about Out of My Song. This is the latest uh, that you've brought out of uh, your studios right now. So, uh, uh, and I see Steve's actually watching us on Facebook Live right now too. So, and by the way, we'll give you a copy of the uh, Facebook Live and also we can convert it into YouTube so you can uh, hold on to it forever in a day. Go and show your mates and say, don't ever talk to these Kiwis. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, tell me all about Out of My Song. Song. I'm absolutely fascinated with this music. So, Out of My Songs is a song that I wrote uh, with um, a close friend of mine named Anthony, and um, basically I've written a, a lot of songs. As a songwriter, we write about the things that are happening in our lives, and um, I've written, you know, when I met the girl, I wrote the I Want to Be With The Girl song, and then I wrote the I'm In Love With The Girl song, and then, I'm, then I wrote the I'm Annoyed With The Girl song, and then I wrote the we just broke up song, and then I wrote the. I, and I, anyway, I walked into the I walked into the writing session with Anthony, and I said, "Oh man, I've just got to get her out of my song." And he said, "That's what we're writing tonight." So we ended up writing the song "Get Out of My Song," which is, uh, you know, it's it's this it's about moving on. Really, that's what that's what it's about. It's taking that last that last little bit of "I care about you" and just throwing it out the door and moving on to whatever comes, you know? Now, I fully understand that. I really, really do. And uh, I'm just wondering, where did you get this recorded? Who was your producer for this? Me. <laughs> you recorded it yourself in your own studio? Yeah, so I recorded all the instruments. I did the vocal with um, a, um, a producer up here in uh, Brizzy, um, guy, a guy named... Um, Steve James, who did uh, the Screaming Jets and Cold Chisel and um, a lot of big Aussie kind of rock stuff. Um, but because my stuff's on the rockier edge of country, um, it, it seemed like like he, I, I really like his drum sounds and he pulls great guitar sounds as well. So um, I went through, I used him, yeah. You know, Brooke, I got to admit, uh, your music is. Rocky, in fact, uh, we only like playing something with a heartbeat here, if you know what I mean. So you fit right in absolutely yeah. brilliantly. And we're honoured to be able to uh, release this song to the world today. But first of all, I want to talk to you about the video. Uh, and I absolutely love that. Uh, and uh, we're releasing that as well today, which is rather funny for being a radio station, uh, releasing a video. But tell me all about it. So the, I shot the video at... Um these days called it's now called Groundwater it was called um, Broad Beach Country Music Festival and uh, that was about uh, a month ago now I was on Sunday afternoon and uh, I was 
shut the video there. So that's a lot. It's a performance clip. It's pretty much what you can expect to see if you come to a Brooke Chevelle show. You know, uh, I, I really want to come to a Brooke Chevelle show. I really, really do. But moreover, I would like to see Brooke Chevelle here in New Zealand and uh, having a bit of a, uh, a banter between each other and a, a few performances as well, you know, and uh, get together and put you in front of New Zealand. We've got a lot of friends from New Zealand. I'd love to come over there. Nice. Absolutely brilliant. We will uh, uh, work something out for you. I'll get in touch with Barbara here to be able to work something out. She runs the uh, Aurora Entertainment side of it, and we would love to be able to do something uh, in the summertime, have you over here uh, and performing in front of New Zealand audiences. Believe me, I'm sure they will absolutely eat you up here. Uh, literally. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, It'll be a huggy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It pro probably will be, actually. And uh, a few beers that don't have an X in it. <laughs> now, tell me, I've heard a rumour from my, some of my mates, from my New Zealand mates, and they reckon that at parties over there, they drive a beer truck up, and you drink, you pay for how much beer you drink out of the back of the truck, is that right? It, it has happened, yes, I have known it to happen, <laughs> I really, really have. Uh, but at the same time, I've also known them to uh, drive a truck up full of cans, and uh, the guy that gets the last can actually gets the bill. <laughs> No, nobody does. Nobody does. It's strange how on the pallet on the back of the truck there just seems to be one can left. <laughs> Can never figure that one out. Uh, but I have seen that one happen as well. Uh, we've done things like Sulphur City Runs and uh, done shows for them, if you know what I mean. And believe me, these things go off. And yes, <laughs> we have some fun with some beer trucks. We really, really do. Uh, and we'd love to be able to bring you into that culture because uh, that's kind of the stuff I like to do as well. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Nice, nice. We're going to set it up. I'll get Barbara to tee it up for you. Uh, now, at the same time, I think it's only fair that we uh, actually play Out of My Song. Here is Bro Brooke Chevelle right here at Galaxy with Out of My Song. Are you okay with your Yeah, I'm good. I'm nice, good. nice. So um, we'll do the wind up after this. Um, but at the same time, Brooke, what I might do is I'll get Barbara to do a little video so that we can put it on our website, Brooke. Um, yeah, cool. Literally, let me just tell you right now, we have 5,493,000 online. It's not a bad hour. It really is. About <laughs> every. Cool. We don't normally go under five, and um, it, it sort of picks out most weekdays between five and seven million. And uh, wow. unless cool. unless it was last New Year's Eve where we had eleven million people, the world wanted to join us. <laughs> <laughs> and I was getting drunk. I was getting drunk that night. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> you were passed out for two hours. Yeah, I kind of was passed out for two hours. I had an early start. <laughs> so, um, what we'll do is, we, you see, the reason why I mention that is with that many people, they hit our website to be able to stream us, but yeah. they don't just stream us and sit there and be happy with the music, they get nosy and go looking through our pages and everything. And yeah. on the uh, homepage, we have a thing called shout outs where we get our artists to say something like, Hi, this is Brooke Chevelle, thank you to TJ Grant and Galaxy 107 FM. We put that on there, and uh, they go looking through who names are, and then start researching you before you know it. You're going to have a whole mess of fans trying to contact you. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, it's happened. At the same time, if you've got any April, any uh, merchandise, and I'm actually going to ask you about websites and everything next, and yeah. how people to believe people actually see what I'm wearing and go and research that as well, if you know what I mean. So if you've got yeah. a spare t-shirt or something and you want and a little bit of extra free promotion, toss it over to the Dutch mate. I'd be more than honoured to be able to promote you. Over the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to relate to you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, literally, if you feel like some extra 
uh, advertising or anything like that. The more yep. you can give us, uh, if we can do giveaways, anything like that, that keeps the Brooke Chevelle band and Brooke Chevelle playing on our station, I would be more than honoured to do that with you. Yeah, cool. Of course. Cool. Nice. And uh, one guy sent me a pillow of his face. <laughs> It, it's disturbing, really, when you come into the office at four o'clock in the morning, turn the light on, and all you see is this guy's face beaming at you from the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Weston, we love you. <laughs> it's a good idea. All the girls like it. Yeah, all the girls like it. They like sitting on Weston's face, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true, Brock, it really is. Anyway, let's go back to the desk. Yeah. Get Sound of Brooks' Fail, of course, out of my song right here at Galaxy. 25 after 9 o'clock, 18 degrees. That's our high for the day. And, and I feel we might actually uh, go up another couple of digits yet. Friday, September 21, and I'm joined coming out of the Gold Coast by Brooke Chevelle, the man himself. And I know we woke him up. I uh, very much appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us over here in New Zealand. And, and believe me, bro, uh, I'm really excited about possibly getting you over here for a few shows. Now, at the same time, uh, for those of you that don't know, how do they get hold of you? Are you on Instagram? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Facebook? Uh, and when they do, do you respond? Just imagine if I said, no, I'm not on social media. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all over social media. Um, at uh, Brooke Chevelle Official is my tag on um, Facebook and uh, also on Instagram. I don't really do Twitter too much, um, but if people contact me, I always respond. Yeah, fair enough too. Now, at the same time, how do we get hold of your music? How do we download it? Uh, and I reiterate, folks, don't try and go and get it for nothing. Uh, go and buy the music. Uh, is it on iTunes, Amazon, places like that? Yeah, yep, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, all of the, basically anywhere you can buy digital music, you can buy my stuff. Nice, nice. Now, at the same time, do you have a website? And on your website, do you have a merchandise store? Yeah, I do. So if you go to um, brookchevelleofficial.com, um, there's a merch store on there, and it'll, and it'll guide you through the process of buying the stuff that you want to buy. You know, the freakiest thing is actually being in another part of the country, walking down the street and finding one of your t-shirts passing you in the opposite direction. I have had that happen. Weird feeling, don't you think? It's, it's really weird. It's like when, um, you know, occasionally someone will ring me and say, oh, I just heard your song on radio in Dubbo or, you know, somewhere somewhere in the middle of Australia. You know, it always freaks me out. I've, I'm still yet to be driving down the road and hear one of my, just randomly hear one of my sons come on the radio. I've heard of it, you know, interviews and stuff, but I've never just been randomly driving along and heard my song, but a lot of people do, apparently. You know, uh, it, it can happen, it does happen, it happens here a lot, and I've got to admit, uh, we play you uh, in the country show that we have on Sundays, uh, 16 hours of country music, and in there uh, you do feature. Plus, on a Monday night as well, we have you in Galaxy Artist now that you've done a, uh, an interview, and that was about seven months ago. We've been playing you ever since, to be honest. And oh, awesome. we are totally, totally uh, amoured with your style of music. We get a lot of requests for you. We really, really do. A and are looking forward to the next instalment. Please don't make it seven months, my friend. <laughs> it's got to be sooner than that. It won't be sooner. <laughs> okay, see you in a year's time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. 
<laughs> nice. If you still have me, I'll be back. We would be honoured to have you back, my friend. We really, really would. Huge fans over here. You've got to be honest with you, my friend. Uh, the whole office enjoys your music, and we absolutely love talking to you in the Gold Coast. And hopefully one day, maybe if we can't get you over here, maybe one day we'll get over to see one of your shows over there. Yeah, totally. You should come over. It's, it's beautiful. Absolutely. I tell you what, I'll bring some hoo-hoo grubs with me, uh, what can you bring to the table? I, I, what's a hoo-hoo grub? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go there. Let's do this. Because I do this with every artist from uh, possibly Canada all the way through to Latvia. Uh, literally, a uh, hoo-hoo grub. You must have heard of a caterpillar, right? Oh, uh, is it like a witchy? Is it like a witchy grub? That's kind, what we have here. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, big white things with a black head, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when, when you put it in your mouth and you bite off the head, don't eat the head, it's yucky. Uh, it tastes like creamy peanut butter. Yeah, I think it's pretty much the same, I think. You yeah. cook them as well, we put them on the fire as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do. I just feel sorry for the poor grub. A, it's going to get a stick up its bum, and secondly, <laughs> it's going to get munched up. Uh, yeah, no, we, we do do uh, a few varieties of the hoo-hoo here in New Zealand and uh, of course the uh, indigenous folks, the Maoris over here, uh, absolutely love watching uh, people's faces when they see a bowl of this presented in front of them. You've got to ask yourself, who is this guy who's handing me a bowl of these things? Yeah, it really <laughs> must be weird, don't you think? Uh, yeah, not too many people are eating uh, the grubs these days but Whatever works for you, mate. <laughs> exactly. We have a thing in uh, uh, Hokitika down the South Island, West Coast of the South Island, Wild Foods, and believe me, the hoo hoo is a, a, permanent fixture, uh, a permanent feature on the uh, on the menu, if you know what I mean, uh, right next to uh, Deep Fried Grasshoppers. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, there's, there's a few restaurants here that do crocodile and kangaroo. Well, I mean, there's a lot of places that do kangaroo these days. We do like to eat skippy. Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's wrong. It really is wrong. Yes. I don't mind the crocodile. It's delicious. Really? Delicious. Oh yeah. Ha have you tried it yourself? Have you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, I, I will take that under advisement. Uh, really, uh, we don't eat our national icons anywhere. Well, we eat emu as well. well I haven't had emu, but kangaroo is pretty, um, a pretty popular meat. It's just like a really rich steak. Really, it's actually quite nice. You know, I, when I come over, you and I will go out and have a, a, a skippy meal for sure. Absolutely, uh, I'm very, very intrigued about that. Are you telling me they don't do Kentucky fried kiwi over there? No, unfortunately, we don't even deep fry our kiwi over here. We emulate our bird. Uh, I was actually talking to a guy uh, from Texas the other day, and he says to me, "Grant, uh, your national bird and our national bird, if they got into a fight." Who would win? I said, mate, your bird would have lunch. Well, actually, would have dinner because ours comes out at night. <laughs> I find it funny um, when, um, when people from the States talk about their bald eagle. Um, do you, have you ever seen the difference between the size of a bald eagle and a wedgetail eagle? No, I haven't. A, a wedgetail, Aussie wedgetail eagle is about four times the size of a bald eagle. There you go. It's supremacy right there, isn't it? I mean... Uh, Everything bigger and better comes down from down under, really, doesn't it? Oh, I don't know about that. You've got some, some big fellas over there, a lot bigger than us Aussie guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to get into football, do we? No, we do not. No, we'll, we'll pass over the football. Oh, unless you're talking about league, then, then we're okay. Okay, yeah, and believe me, uh, I'm a big fan of rugby league. Uh, believe me, I used to play, uh, would you believe, many, many years ago for the uh, C team for Canterbury Bankstown. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, under the tutelage, would you believe, of Terry Lamb. Really? Yes. A awesome. And, uh, of course, we got to meet all the old uh, faves, like the little Aussie general, uh, Alfie Langer, and Mel, and everybody like that. So, uh, believe me... Uh, I know about the league, I've played it, and that's why I don't follow the Warriors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. struggle. Uh, look, they they got another 50 years to learn yet. <laughs> they really do. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, good on them for being a part of the game. 
Uh, yeah. the, the, the one that gets me, and I've got to be honest with you, bro, I don't understand this game, is, uh, of course, the um, Aussie rules. I, well, I'm actually, I'm from Melbourne originally, so I'm, I'm a Mexican, and um, I'm, I'm all about the AFL. My team's doing really well at the moment, so I love them live. Okay, yeah, no, it's, well, you see, I'm brought up on Union, uh, and yeah. we don't pass forward, and, and we have so many backward rules, if you know what I mean. Coming into the AFL really does confuse us Kiwis. I mean, first thing you see is somebody bumping it forward, you go, hey, hold on, that's out of, <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, somebody of your caliber that would know more about the sport, I'd be fascinated in learning uh, more of the uh, sport, what the rules are for, for a start off, if you know what I mean. And, and why do they have four posts? Can't you get it yeah. through two? No, well, I mean, we don't have the one in the middle though to kick it over, so it's just different, different rules, different game. Exactly. Ex yeah, look, it looks like a lot of fun. I've got to be honest with you, I've never gone down the field bouncing a ball before. <laughs> and have on have the. Have you ever tried bouncing one of those oval shaped things? Not fun. No, it's <laughs> difficult, it really, really is. You've got to hit it in the right place to get it to return to you, otherwise. You could be anywhere, really, and you look like you're chasing chickens, you know what I mean? Uh, so there is a very, very, um, a huge amount of talent in being able to play the game. Uh, it's just that I, as a Kiwi, don't actually understand it. Uh, to me, it's like bowls. <laughs> well, bowls is pretty easy. You just get one your bowl nearest the little one, that's it. Well, that's bowls. You, you know, the, the, the funny thing is, uh, the president of the local bowling club here is actually our sports presenter here at Galaxy. And oh, really? <laughs> uh, I, I keep accusing him of saying, you're just corralling old folks. <laughs> yeah, but all of it, all the elite, um, all the elite bowlers are all in their 30s and 40s. You'd be surprised. They must have, they must have started young. Yeah, look, uh, we actually have some uh, young fellas coming up at the moment that are being considered for New Zealand teams, 17 and 18 years of age. Yeah. You know, it isn't an old folks game, it really isn't. And, and I've, always, I've always understood it to be that, if you know what I mean. And, and I can't wait to retire to be able to sit there and uh, have a couple of brewskis and uh, throw a black thing down at a white thing. That's always fun to me. Cheap, cheap brewskis too. The boss cops always have the cheapest beer. Yeah, absolutely, and the RSLs. I love the RSLs over there, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, so uh, we have a few things in common, Brooke, and uh, we absolutely love your music. Can't wait for you to uh, come back again and release more music. Uh, and you say about uh, yeah, just over a year before you uh, get the album completely completed? Oh, probably just under. It's probably more like six, six to eight months, I think. It's just a matter of, like, I've got... Like I said, I've got um, three songs that have been out already off that'll be on the album. I've got another two that I'm going to release, uh, one that I'll release this year and two that I'll release, uh, well, one in January and then the next one will release with the album in probably March or April. So that's the goal anyway. Nice. So we will be expecting you to be able to get in touch with us because we would be honoured to do this over again, my friend. We really, really would. And please... Please, anytime you feel like a chat to a Kiwi, give us some uh, stick, as I know you can. Um, oh, and, love my Kiwi friends. <laughs> of course you do. And uh, the reciprocation is, of course, coming from us as well. We absolutely love you and, and love the work you do. Please don't change a thing. Just make it better and bring it over here. I will do. Nice. Don't go anywhere, Brooke, uh, because believe me, we uh, have a couple of things we're going to get you to do. But in the meantime... You're right here at Galaxy. Yeah.